Don't they dear that? Hello, I'm going to Kosovo all alone with almost no money, no film crew, no makeup with friends except for the one I met. Just myself witnessing his newborn by exploring many of its historical cathedrals, trying to grab a bargain at their famous open air market, and experiencing some of its natural beauty along the way. I'll be checking out his reconstruction progress in the state of his democracy 20 years after the war. As well, all the tasty food and getting around on a budget. All done safely inexpensively and easily. Oh, so interesting. Uh... Located in Southeast Europe, the Republic of Kosovo is one of the newest countries in the world since declaring its unilateral independence from Serbia. This new nation is landlocked in the heart of the Balkans and has an undeserving image of conflict, poverty, and chaos. But within this chaos is rich with history, culture, and nature. Kosovo has a great tourism potential with many of its natural features and historical architecture. That's why I'm here to experience the best that it has to offer, its magnificent monasteries, to walk along its pristine lake, to taste its diverse food, to witness firsthand the destruction of Citerian conflict and the challenges and the progress of its post-war legacy. Most importantly, the warm hospitality of the people of Kosovo. Uh, two years old. With us are our journey from Kosovo's capital Pristina is well connected to major cities in Europe by Pristina International Airport. It's also connected by rail to Skopje in northern Macedonia. As well, multiple daily bus connections from Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro and North Macedonia. But for me, other stop might arrive from Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. There are three to four daily buses serving Belgrade to Pristina and the journey takes about six hours. The ticket costs around $20. However, here is a warning. Since Serbia do not recognize Kosovo as a sovereign country, you cannot enter Kosovo from third country and leave through Serbia. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kosovo. We have entered through Serbia and uh, Pretty quick actually. Let me say let's hope this right and soon we can get to Pristina. So welcome to Pristina. This is the bus station where you get off and the city center is roughly about two kilometers away from here. So it's not so far. If you don't have that much luggage then the best thing is to walk. If you do then you can take a taxi. It costs about one and a half to two euros or so. But that being said Let's head down and uh, start our adventure here in Kosovo. The motto of the city is newborn, for being the youngest capital in Europe. Pristina holds our physical remnant of the peer of old and the new. Once named Ljubljana and was considered one of the most important Roman cities in the Balkan Peninsula. In the 5th and the 9th century, the area was part of the Byzantine Empire. During the 1999 Kosovo War, Pristina was spared from a large-scale destruction. Today, the city is heart of the country's political, cultural and economic center, and famous for being the youngest population in Europe, with an average age of only 25 years old. <laughs> With so many youthful souls, let's get going. Kosovo uses euros. ATM here has uh, extremely high withdrawal fees. So I recommend you exchange your currency for euros at a local bank. Do not ever exchange money on the street. I recommend you stay at the city center as your home base while in Kosovo, since all the tracks you mentioned here are walkable on foot within the city. That's why I stay at the Hostel White Tree. They offer both clean and comfortable dorm beds and private rooms, as well in-house pub with a lively atmosphere. Thanks guys! We'll start by paying a visit to Mother Teresa. <laughs> I mean, the Cathedral of St. Mother Teresa. This is a Roman Catholic cathedral dedicated to the world's most famous nun. In 2005, the foundation stone was ceremoniously laid by the former president of Kosovo, Abraham Rogova, himself a Muslim. The unfinished cathedral was inaugurated in September 5, 2010 as part of the event commemorating the 100th anniversary of her birth and was formally consecrated seven years later on September 5, 2017. 
20 years after Mother Teresa's death. The cathedral has a beautiful interior natural lighting during the daytime, involving the sun coming through the stained glass and creating a stunning effect on otherwise a largely white church. However, the biggest draw of the cathedral is the bell tower, from which you can see the whole city and the surrounding area. This beautiful cathedral was constructed in the name of the Mother Teresa, the mother of love. She had been uh, born here in Kosovo, but then she go as missionary in India. She is an Albanian, but she loved all the people like same, you know. And I uh, hope you all came here to visit the cathedral. This cathedral was constructed in 2007, but was uh, finished in 2008. And last year we celebrated the colonization of Mother Teresa in the Vatican. <laughs> So this is also where you get a really, really, really awesome 360 view of Pristina and you can uh, see out all the way to the mountains here, the snow-capped mountains, which is true, pretty uh, magnificent. Across the cathedral, you find one of the most recognizable landmarks in Pristina that resemble a giant prison. But it's actually the National Library of Kosovo. The building was completed in 1986. Despite many calling the building one of the ugliest in the country, it certainly is a unique architectural effort and captures the spirit of the country recently ravaged by war and working to move forward and rebuild. There are more than 2 million library items, including rare materials such as books, newspaper, manuscript, maps, and photographs. There are two reading rooms, an amphitheater and a meeting hall. It has been used by Croatian and Bosnian refugees as a living quarter and by Serbian army as a command center, during which many historical books were destroyed. Beside the library, you'll find the most popular and lively street in the city, the Mother Teresa Boulevard. This is the main street of Pristina and consists of cafes, shops, and a bit of invasion from the good old USA, at least when it comes to the donuts. It's also home to the city's main square. Now this is the main square here in Pristina. It's called Zayat Paiti Square. It's named after the first commander of Kosovo Liberation Army and people refer him as the first gun of freedom. The Macedonian-born Albanian joined Kosovo Liberation Army in 1997 and later that year he was one of the first killed in the gunfight with the Yugoslav Army, one of the main triggers of the Kosovo War. Oh, by the way, my mistake, that is not the name of the square. The square is also home to many gatherings, celebrations, and most importantly, a place for Kosovar to exercise their democracy by protesting. It's not a surprise for any new democracy to encounter many social challenges. Majority of the protests in Pristina happens outside the country's National Assembly at the end of the Mother Teresa Boulevard. The building of the Assembly of the Republic of Kosovo was built in the 50s. The interior consists of a planetary hall as a debate chamber, the office for the elected members and parliamentary staff, the presidential office and its cabinet, as well as assembly library and a visitor center. It was getting late. I'm a little hungry and I'm always on the lookout for some good food, on a budget that is. Since I'm trying to eat healthy, <laughs> let's go with some lean chicken. I want to give you an idea is how average, how much the food actually costs here. This is a uh, stuffed chicken with rice and salad and served with bread that's on the house. This costs 3.5 euros or $4.25. First up, let's try the chicken. It is uh, crispy chicken and uh, stuffed with cheese 
and another piece of chicken breast. So, let's give it a shot. There's also some carrot inside here. What you also get is basically ketchup and mayonnaise. I like to keep things simple. It's really tender, so that's one thing I like about it. The rice. I think the rice needs a bit more seasoning than the salt, but it's pretty really good. I have this gorgeous 24 year old, beautiful lady. But hey, with so many lovely ladies here, it's a crime for me to eat alone. With a little luck, I got a date with this lovely girl who's determined to show me some traditional Kosovar dishes. Uh, this is called Shifta, Reche Baba. Those are still different, but I wanted him to try both of them because they are kind of local food. You can also find those in other Balkan countries. But here in Kosovo, it's kind of traditional way to make meat. And it's combined with few vegetables. Next morning, my adventure continues, but not before a round of breakfast. So, first on the list. Good morning, we can start our day with a breakfast, of course. And I'm going to show you a traditional Kosovo dish called feta. And what it is, is basically, it's almost like a pancake with multiple layer, can, like a creep like pastry. They eat it with sour cream here, but today morning I'm going to have it with a yogurt. This dish is very simple. All it is is basically consists of salt, butter, and yogurt blended together. And another good thing is here on March 18th, it's called the Feta Day, where relatives invite their families in coming together and to prepare feta and eating it. Um, it's very, very plain, but nice. I'm not too sure how to eat it, but this is what I'm going to try. That's the only way I can operate the camera and at the same time eat this. Well, I'm not done yet. The second food I'm going to show you is also a traditional Kosovo um, pastry. And it's basically a mini roll stuffed with meat and onions. With that being said, let's eat. You can see the stuffing right in there. Like the bit of meat, and you can feel the onion. Really, really awesome. After filling up, let's get going by heading to the Pristina's bus station. So once you get to the bus station, you pay the 10 cents platform fees and go to platform number four and you will buy the ticket on the bus. So I believe this is our bus. It leaves pretty frequently. Uh, this one's probably leaving in about next 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not gonna go inside because I like the fresh air. With that being said, let's just hope it leaves soon and we can get there soon. The ride is only 15 minutes and 10 kilometers from the Pristina bus station. And in no time, we have arrived at Gratanitsa, the Serbian part of Pristina, the village centered around the Gratanitsa monastery, built on the ruin of 6th century basilica. We have arrived at Gratanitsa monastery. This is a Serbian Orthodox monastery built in 1321 by King Stefan Maltutin on the ruin of the 6th century basilica. And today, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The monastery was declared a monument of culture of exceptional importance in 1990. In 2006, it was placed under UNESCO World Heritage List under the name of Medieval Monument in Kosovo. Of the former monastery compound, only the church has survived and the monastery is one of King Milton's last monumental endowments. Guatanita Monastery has a shape of five dome building with foundation in the shape of a developed cross, belonging to a group of first-class architectural achievements of the epoch. 
The interior consists of medieval era paintings that are impressive, especially on the side which are enchanted caverns of vivid lifelike murals. After the 99 Kosovo War, the Bishop of the Raska and Patron transferred the official seat to this monastery from Patron. And since then, the monastery has become not only the most important spiritual but also the national and political center of the Serbian people in Kosovo. Beside the monastery, the other attraction in town is the artificial reservoir on the river Gracanka, built in 1963 to 1966 in order to supply the city of Pristina with water. So this is Lake Gratinica behind me. Uh, to get here, there's only two options, either walking six kilometers from Gratinica and uh, taking a taxi. I don't have that much time, so I took a taxi, but make sure you bargain. They try to charge me like six euros one way, and I say round trip six euros, and they accept it. So driver's waiting behind me, but you can always bargain harder, trust me. That's the rule. When it is full, the lake is 3.5 kilometers in length and up to 500 meters wide, with a maximum depth of 30 meters, a total volume of 26 million cubic meters of water. The lake has a catchment area of 109 square kilometers. It is also used and a favorite for locals as a spot for swimming, picnicking, and fishing. We are the flyers. That's so interesting. Uh, I returned to the village for the bus ride back, but not before grabbing a quick bite at the sandwich store. Well, <laughs> at least one of the perks being Asian is is rare for us to come here. And I was invited to join the birthday party for my new friend. It makes me feel so much younger all over again. After my dose of some complimentary sugar, I dropped by the center of the village, a public hangout spot for the locals, a great meeting place for new friends. But I don't have any time, it was time to get going. The bus stop is right beside and in front of the tourist information center. It runs every 30 minutes to Pristina bus station costing only half a euro. But we are not going home just yet. We still have uh, half a day to kill off those sweet, sweet, uh, sweet calories. So directly from Pristina bus station, I took a bus to Pea, another major city located in the western part of Kosovo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Pea. This is the bus terminal you'll be arriving from and I'm ready to get started. With that being said, let's get going. In the medieval times, the city was a seat of Serbian Orthodox Church in 1346 and later in 1899, the Albanian political organization League of Pea was established. Today, it's home to a population of 100,000 in its municipality, covering 600 square kilometers and 95 villages. really really small and you can walk everywhere on foot uh, but if you do decide to take a taxi make sure you bargain bargain really hard because the maximum cost of a ride here anywhere in town is two euros since everything in this town is accessible on foot that is exactly our plan that gives us another excuse to try out a tasty sandwich this time something Turkish so before we begin our journey uh, with a food called a dyer, I think that's what it's pronounced. Uh, basically, it's mild meat inside the uh, pita. Uh, the size is small, but I believe it's really filling because it's stuffed with meat. With that being said, let's eat. Alright, here I go. I use sour cream. It's really stuffed, by the way. It's also very spicy. It's actually pretty nice. 
I think it will be even better if they put some tomatoes in there. With that being said, I'm going to go along with a yogurt because it is really spicy. Bon appétit, people. On our way to our main attraction, Yellow Walk by the city center, the main marketplace established under the Ottoman rule. <laughs> so this is Pia's Old Bazaar, and sadly in 1999, it was mostly destroyed during the conflict, but it's now fully rebuilt and open for business. The market historically housed blacksmiths and carpenters, but also facilitated the agricultural market. The marketplace was completely destroyed at least twice, once during the Italian occupation in 1943 and once during the Kosovo War of 1998 to 1999. The market was fully rebuilt after the Kosovo War in accordance to the historical Ottoman architecture, and today it serves as the main market in the city of Pea. However, if you want to do some bargain hunting, don't come on Sundays as many shops are closed. The walk will also take you along the shore of Bistra, meaning the clear water in Serbian. The stream originally from the eastern slope of Bikra mountain on the border of Kosovo and Montenegro at the elevation of 1900 meters. It was actually quite a surprise when I about to enter the gate, uh, a police officer asked me for my passport and I didn't bring it with me so I gave him my ID card. So just remember if you can come in here, bring some sort of IDs. And number two, get ready to walk. I mean, it's really far from the gate to the monastery, I'm not even there yet. And I think I still have some time to go, but check this out. It's a pretty scenic walk actually it's uh i think it's totally worth it with that being said let's continue soon with the reach of entering our rugova gorge the home of the history patriarchal monastery of peg and since 2006 is a part of medieval monument in kosovo a combined world heritage site along with three other monuments of the serbian orthodox church This is the most famous monastery here in Kosovo. The Patriarch of Peg is a Serbian Orthodox monastery built in the 13th centuries. In the 14th century, it was greatly expanded and consists of several churches. When the Serbian Patriarch of Peg was founded, and it becomes the residence of the Serbian Archbishop. Now, throughout the medieval times and more recently modern times, it also served as a mausoleum for the Serbian Archbishop and Patriarchs. And in 2006, it was declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site. The monastery is currently administered by the Eparchy Reska and Patron, with a special status under the jurisdiction of the Serbian Patriarch, whose title includes Archbishop of Peg. The monastery church is unique in Serbian medieval architecture, with three churches connected as one hold with a total of four churches, built in the first of the 13th century, 1321 to 24th, and 1330 to 37.
major reconstruction work in the monastery were undertaken during 1931 to 1932. In 1947, the picture archive pic was added to Serbia's Monument of Culture of Exceptional Importance list. After the monastery being placed on UNESCO World Heritage List in 2006, further restoration began with a main aim of protecting the complex from the weather as well as to the repair of inner wall and exterior appearance. In 2008, the church facade was painted red. The monastery is the greatest mausoleum of Serbian religious dignitaries, including relic of Serbian church leaders, most of them who are saints. On the way to a bus station, <laughs> I can't resist one euro pizza. Hey, I like to support the local economy. It's not bad either. Now, I haven't had a decent pizza in quite some time. And as you can see, the pizza only costs one euro. So I thought, why not? So this is what you get. Let me go really, really far here in Kosovo. So with that being said, let's eat Ko Kosovo pizza. It's definitely worth one euro. Now one difference I can find with uh, Kosovo pizza is uh, American pizza's crust are more crispier and um, thicker. But their pizza is actually thinner. Uh, their pizza as well is, is served with um, olives and as well as peppers. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how to eat them but I just do this. Oh thank you. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, people are really friendly here, they offer me help all the time. So we are heading out to Jukova right now. And uh, the bus leaves here pretty frequently. And it's roughly about 1 hour and 20 minutes. <sighs> With that being said, I hope this will be a speedy ride. Once again, it's too early. I'm not here to sleep. Next up, I decided to check out the heart of the historic trading route during the Ottoman era between Skroler, one of the most important ancient cities in the Balkans, and the capital, Istanbul. The city of Jakova had been populated since the prehistoric eras and one of the most developed Balkan cities during the Ottoman period. However, the city suffered greatly from the Serbian and the Montenegro forces during the First Balkan War. The town was badly affected by the Kosovo War, suffering great physical destructions and large-scale human losses and human rights abuses. Yugoslav unit was stationed in and near the town in two barracks due to the risk of being attacked by the Kosovo Liberation Army from across the border in Albania. In one instance, NATO aircraft misidentified a convoy of Albanian refugees and attacked it. The destruction can be seen today, and many of the structures are left in ruins. Now, major cities like uh, Pristina and Peja pretty much already got rebuilt after the war, but there are still places like this city, which is less well known, and that's why I believe is almost um, critical to have tourists come here to have money coming in to help them rebuild the infrastructures and create jobs for the local populations because unemployment here is extremely extremely high and so I hope you come to visit many of the beautiful off-beaten path places here in this country Our first stop is another monastery, but thank goodness, <laughs> it's closed. To be honest with you, I don't seem to mind. It feels like it's the only thing they have in this country. Sometimes, Whoa. being a solo traveler does have its downside, which is like going to places that you want to see, but it's closed, like this monastery right here. So I hope that will not deter you from keep going. So I'm going to go to the next place I want to see. Well, that being said, Let's get going. I kept on going to the nearby the old bazaar dating from the 15th century. So this is a big bazaar here. Uh, as you can see, um, you can basically find everything. Uh, however, it is a little bit deserted. 
and it can definitely use some more tourism and have more tourism dollar coming here to support the local economy. What I've been saying is look around and see what kind of deals I can find. The bazaar is the heart of the economy in Jakova and covers 380,000 square feet of market space and 1 km in length. Its importance came shortly after the appearance of first craftsmen and the arts and processing produce after Jakova obtained a small town status in the late 16th century. It was burned and destroyed and then it was reconstructed after suffering damage during the 1999 Kosovo War. Many of the nearby landmarks such as the clock tower was also destroyed in the first Balkan war and recently rebuilt. Another one of the town's landmark is Hala Maas, built in the last decade of the 16th century and named after its donor. A rectangular dome-shaped cover structure, it belongs to a classical form of mosque of the Islamic Kosovo style. Around the mosque, there are tombs with sculpted decorations engraved in the Old Ottoman language. In 2000, the restoration project started, but because of difficulty in finding skilled craftsmen and good materials, the restoration stopped in 2002. In 2003, the cultural heritage without borders took over the restoration of Hatha Moss and was finally completed in 2005. Well, I'm actually having another coffee. It's uh, hard to stay awake. The good thing is the bus station is right next to it. So uh, this will keep me awake for the next little while until the bus comes. It was getting late, and I definitely don't want to miss the last bus. After all, I got no will or energy to walk 80 meters, I mean 80 kilometers to Pristina. So we are heading back to Pristina, and this ride should take about an hour and a half. Um, there's a bus on an hourly basis uh, from early morning to 7 o'clock. With that being said, let's hope this will be a smooth ride. It was completely dark when I arrived in Pristina and I am not going to bed hungry, especially it's my last night in this country. So I decided to go back to America a little earlier. <laughs> I mean, to pay American themed restaurant a visit to inspect if their burgers and fries are legit. So after busy all day, right now it's almost midnight, most of the places are already closed. But this is American like uh, theme joint, route number 66, and uh, they do have lots of American burgers on the menu. And me, I like chicken. Taste of America. The difference is they actually use a whole chicken breast. They deep fry it, put it inside, uh, put it inside a burger for you. And their French fries are actually bigger than the one we have back home, but still. Bring back the home away from home feeling. Good old America. With well, that being said, enjoy your meal. Good bon appetit. Next morning marks the beginning of the end of my journey in Kosovo. The Pristina International Airport is easily accessible by bus for 3 euros or frequent service between 7 in the morning to 7 at night and the taxi costs around 20 to 30 euros. But I'm heading to Bulgaria's capital Sofia via Skopje by bus. There's multiple daily service for this route from Pristina bus station starting at 6 in the morning to 7 in the evening. It's a 2 hour ride. Before ending this episode, I know you probably noticed unlike other episodes where there's a lot of tourist attraction. In the Kosovo episode, there's not much to see other than the old religious sites. Sadly, this is the case. However, I'd like to remind our audience that Kosovo is a young country that's still under reconstruction and faces numerous challenges, including lack of tourist infrastructure. That is why I encourage you to visit this young country to support its development and to experience its authentic Balkan culture without overrun by tourists. However, when you visit this country, I hope it's going to be a lot more developed than what you see on this episode. With that being said, I hope you have an amazing time and a safe journey here in Kosovo. See you next time.
Tongue.